Praise the Lord. Welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, welcome to another Friday Bible study at noon. I am your host, Pastor Jackie, and uh, let's get started. We're still going to continue on the uh, series, Active Faith. Active means a faith that's in that's movement, that, that moves, uh, uh, motion, and so we don't want to a, a passive faith, and passive means accepting or allowing what happens or what com what others do or what the devil do through others without active without an active response or resistance, just standing there and taking or whatever happens happen, and it's the Lord's will that the Lord will be done. No, we have must have a, a active faith so we can uh, challenge some things. Amen. Okay, so God has designed the kingdom of God to operate on faith principles. God has designed the kingdom of God to operate on faith principles. They do not operate just because we're a child of God, or just because we're a Christian, or just because we're born again. I wish it did, just automatically just operate because I'm a child of God. No, they operate as as we act in concert with the Word of God. So as we act in concert with the Word of God, then our faith will work. And so we can operate the kingdom of God. And uh, it's through the Word of God. It is through the Word of God. It's so important because it is through the Word of God that God does everything so it is important for me and you and all of us to know what does the word says. And so once we know what the word says, we can get in line with it so we can begin to experience the blessings of God in our life. God said, all things are yours. He said, everything is mine, but you won't know all things are yours unless you get in the word or get into the will and find out what's been left to you. He said, all things, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Well, everything that he gave here, he has given us that pertain to life and godliness is in the will. It's in the word of God. So you got to dig in there and find out what has been left to me so you can begin to operate in the kingdom of God. And it's all done by through, his, through the word of God. So God does not want us to be defeated, but you will be defeated if you don't do the word of God. And I don't know about you, but I was defeated for years because I say I'm saved and I thought because I was saved, everything ought to go. Uh, just fine, but I found out it just not, uh, you're going to still be defeated as a Christian if you don't get in there and find out what does the word say and be able to operate in that word of God. The only thing I found out that the devil respect is the word of God. That's why Jesus kept saying it is when the enemy came to tempt him and try to get him off the word of God, he kept saying it is written, it is written. So you got to know what's written because that's the only thing that the devil uh, respect. So, God does not want you to be sick, confused, uh, broke, and disgusted. But you will be broke, sick, disgusted, and confused if you don't do your do the word. So that means we're gonna have to do our part. We all got a part to uh, play, and that part is to get into the word of God, find out what is it the word of God is saying, and then activate on it. Now. Here in, in this uh, situation, we're getting ready to read in the book of Luke. Here is another illustration on how people, how these people activated the power of God and received the desires of their heart. So they, so you want to activate the power of God so you can receive the desires of your heart. Let's go to Luke uh it's a activated, I like the word activated, the power 
of God. And I found out that the power of God is in you. He said he's able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think, but it's going to be according to the power of God that working in you. And so we know that the word of God is power. It's going to be according to the word of God that you have deposited on the inside of you. And so let's go to Luke 5 and 17. 5 and 17. Luke 5 and 17 says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of God was present to hear them. It say the power of God was present. The power, the ability of God was there to heal. It say after he had done after he was teaching, so when faith comes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So God always teaches. So when you hear the, the, the Jesus teaching or the, your pastor or a preacher, whoever ministering the word of God, faith always comes for you to either act on the word or not act on the word of God. So the power of God, the ability of God was present to heal. And so let's see. What happened? They say he was here them. But notice who was there. It was Pharisees, doctors of the law, and people from all towns, Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem. They all came. So we're going to see. So that means everybody who come to hear the word is not going to do the word. Uh, every time everybody that come to church is not going to. Uh, that it's not going to benefit from it. And they say, but look what right here. It says, and behold, men brought in a bed. They brought in a bed, a man which was taken with policy. So here you go, a man that's on a bed that was paralyzed. This man was taken with policy. In other words, he was paralyzed. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay before and lay him before him. So they sought means. How can we bring him in? That means there were so many people because they came from Galilee, Jerusalem, or Judea, all these different towns to hear Jesus. And so they couldn't get in before for the people. So they said they sought means how they could get in there. And in their minds, see, in these people's minds, and behold, they brought me and they say that it was taken with policy. So in their mind, they were convinced, it had to be, that God wanted this man healed. And to think that some people is going around saying that God puts certain things on them. It's a contradictory to the word of God. Why would God want to put sickness? I mean, you got Christians going around saying that God put this sickness on them. They suffering for the Lord. Uh, God got them sick. God got this gout. God got this sugar diabetes. God got whatever this gout on me. I'm suffering for the Lord. And God don't have anything. Why would God put that on you? And why would you blame God for that? Well, you won't even put that on your own children. You don't realize that we are children of God. And just and you got the, the God has more sense than you got to, I hope you believe that because just like you wouldn't put things on your children and you want your children well, then God wants his children well and he will not put certain things on us. God does not put anything on us. And so you say, you wouldn't even do that to your own kids like I said and you, if I, uh, Acts 10 and 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That's ability. Deuteronomy's might. And who went about, it says he, Jesus, went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So oppressed uh, for God was with him. This word oppressed means to exercise dominion against. So the enemy was going around exercising dominion against people. And particularly, uh, it's people in the body of Christ that Satan is exercising his dominion against them. And, and the devil has dominion over sickness. You say, well, how does he exercise dominion over me? I'm a Christian. Well, the devil has dominion over sickness, disease, lack, poverty, fear, 
plagues, viruses, whatever. That's the devil. If you ex exercise his will over people, just like the, uh, in this lesson here, the devil was ex had exercised his uh, dominion against his person. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Christian, the devil has no right to exercise mm -hmm. his dominion of sickness, disease, mm -hmm. lack of poverty, plagues, or anything over you. Because they say, we have been delivered, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness or from Satan's dominion into the kingdom of God. We're in the kingdom of God. And just because we're in the kingdom of God, don't think that the devil would just come. He, he's not going to uh, put try to put anything on you. He will. He don't care about you being a Christian, about you loving the Lord. You better know your rights. You better know what belongs to you and what don't. And you need to know that you've been translated, that you're not in his kingdom anymore and know and that's why I say know the will so you can exercise your thoughts against the things that he tried to put on you because there was a lady in the Bible I think it was Luke 13 and 16 I believe and she was a daughter of Abraham she was a Christian and she had been bound for 18 years and so just because you're a Christian there's some people they've been bound for years, suffer for years, saying they suffer for the Lord. And that is not true. You got this Satan exercising his dominion on you, and you have to rise up because the power of God is present to heal you. So if you are born again, child of God, the power of God is present to heal you. And if you're born again, the power of God is in you. The power of God is in you what? So you need to receive the benefits from the word of God. They say the power of God is in you to heal you. But you, but you need to know that. A lot of people don't know that the power of God is in them. But if you're born again, the power of God is in, in you to heal. Now, like I was saying in the 18th verse, And behold, they brought the man in, which was taken with the palsy, and they sought me to bring him in and to lay him before him, to lay him before Jesus. So like I said, they were convinced that God wanted this man healed. And so the 19th verse says, and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because the multitude, they went up on the housetop. This is, remember I said, faith is motion. Faith is acting. They went up on the housetop and led him down through the tower, which is couch, with his couch, into the midst before Jesus. This is faith in action. They didn't say, oh, I, I know the Lord want this man healed and didn't do anything. No, they say, since God, since I know that God wants this man healed, or since I know God wants me healed, I'm going to do something. I'm going to Jesus. I'm going to act on the word of God. Because the next verse says, and, and when he saw their faith, how do you see faith? How does God see faith? Well, when God, God, just, God saw them acting on the word. So when you act on the word of God, that is your faith. That is what God is looking at. Every time you act on the word of God, God sees your faith. Because faith is what? Acting on the word of God. So that means you have to act. So when God sees us acting on the word of God, he will do the same thing for you. Just like they acted on the word of God, then you got to act on the word of God. And when you act, God will heal you because they say the power of God is in you for you to be healed. Amen? I hear people say you can lay hands on yourself and be healed. Nobody don't necessarily have to lay because you have the word of God in you. You got the power of God in you. Lay your hand on yourself. Speak to yourself and you tell your body, self, tell your body be healed in Jesus' name. And they say when he saw their faith, he said unto them, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And so and the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, reason. They began to talk among themselves, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? See, they all said they were exercising their faith to receive from God, too. They in there uh, uh, criticizing God. They want to know, who is this who's here? How can he forgive sin? So God said, talk is cheap. I'm going to show you that I got power to forgive sins. I got power to forgive sins and I'm going to heal them. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, see, 
He would receive what they were talking about. He asked and said to them, what reason ye in your heart? Why are you reasoning in your heart? What is easy to say that sins be forgiven thee, uh, to say rise and walk, either one is I can do both of them. Talk is cheap, but I'm going to let you know I got the power to hear because I'm going to tell this man to rise up and walk. But that ye may know. See, you're going to know that I got the power on earth, and people are going to know that you got the power on earth to heal too because you're going to begin to act. They say, but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power. They say, son, notice it say, son of man. Son, not God, son of man. And we are, and he was the son of a man, just like we are the child of a man. So that if he can do it, we can do it. So Jesus said, son of man uh, had power upon earth. Just like Jesus had the power upon earth to forgive and heal, we have a power on earth to forgive and heal sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, the man that was paralyzed, I say unto thee, arise. Now, don't Jesus know this man, I, you know, faith is something else, I tell you. Faith is not, faith is not moved by your circumstances. Because he told the man, how could Jesus ask the man to arise when he know the man cannot walk? How can faith ask you to get up out of a bed or arise and walk when, he, when faith knows that you are sick? Faith knows that you paralyzed and faith see you laying down on the bed and you going to tell me I'm to get up and walk? I tell you, faith is not moved by your circumstances. When faith comes, see, when faith comes, the ability comes for you to do what God say do, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when Jesus got through teaching and he spoke the word of God, faith came for that man to get up. And he knew that man had faith because Jesus said he perceived in the man to have faith. He saw their faith. He saw them acting on the word of God. And I say over and over again, God will jump over a million people to get to a person who's going to act on the word of God, who's going to believe God and take God in his word and do what he say do. So God said, uh, get, take up your bed. Told the man to take up his bed and walk. That's what faith did. What did the man do when Jesus told the man to take up his bed and walk? Well, when they, he said, but you, but, uh, the 24, 24 verse say, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth. We got the power upon earth right now to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy. See, he says something. I say unto thee, arise and take up that couch and go into that house. The man didn't debate. Jesus, don't you know I'm been here laying on this couch? Did you know they had to bring me in from the roof? And you gonna tell me to get up and walk? No, the man didn't. What did the man do? And immediately he arose up before them and took up that for one he lay. In other words, the mat on the couch they brought him in and appointed to his own house, glorifying God. So when the faith comes and it tells you to do something, then you need to do it then. Faith is pressing he to heal you, for you to get up, for you to act, for you to do what God say. Don't reason with it and say, well, I ain't walked in five years, or I haven't talked in, in five, whatever it is. No, when faith comes, get up out of your situation because that's what faith uh, will do. And so the man got up and, and began to walk. He obeyed the word of God. Remember, faith is acting on the word of God. So he acted on the word that Jesus spoke. There was another man in the Bible that Jesus told him to get up off of his, uh, get up. And not I thought, to say off of his couch, but anyway, God told him to take up his bed and walk. Whatever you land on, he told him to take up his bed and walk. So and let's go to John 5. Here's another one, John, John 5, starting at the... Uh, I like when Jesus say, faith does not look at your circumstances. I tell you, I love the word of God. Only thing, uh, respond, you got to get to respond to this faith. Now here go another situation of uh, what that where this man acted on the word of God. Finally got to the word of God because Jesus wouldn't be in the end. The word not gonna give in to you. You gonna have to give in to the word. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city near the sheep gate was Bethesda pool with five covered platforms of porches surrounding it. 
Crowds. They say, my God, crowds of sick folks, lame, blind, or with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platform waiting, waiting, waiting for a certain movement of the water. See, faith he will move you. But they was waiting on this water. But they say, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water. I thank God the faith is pressing. I always hear them. If we ain't got to have the faith to wait, we got the faith to taste. They say, for an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water. And the first person to step down into it afterwards was him. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. Ooh, in the same condition for 38 years, waiting on the movement of the water. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked him, would you like to get well? You'll say, why would somebody ask somebody that's been laying there for 38 years, would you like to be here. Well, because you may not want to. You've been there for 38 years. You may not want to be here. You may want to lay there 38 more years to keep coming up with all these excuses why you can't do what God say do. So you got to ask. That's what he asked. Do you want to get well? But guess what he said? I can't. See, then God has to get all that doubt out of him and keep preaching faith to him so he can receive and be healed. I can't, the sick man said. For I have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water. While I am trying to get there, someone else always gets in the head of me. Jesus didn't ask him for his excuses. He said, do you want to get well? Jesus told him, stand up. Notice Jesus' faith is not moved by none of that. Jesus told him, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat and go home. So now faith, that when you hear faith, the ability comes for you to do the word. So he says, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat, and go on home. Instantly the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. So when faith comes, you can move, you can act, you can do the word of God. He told him to uh, take up his bed and walk. Now another thing I observe, how long have you been in your situation? You won't have to, if you're going to continue to lay there until you take God and his word and begin to act. Now, if you allow your circumstances to control your life, you will never, but never rise to the place God wants you to be. I will say it again. If you allow your circumstances to control your life, you will never but never rise to the place God wants you to be. You will continue to make excuses. You cannot go by your circumstances because 2 Corinthians 4 and 18 says, while we look not at the things of which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. That means they're subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal, meaning your circumstances are subject to change. Thank God that the that with faith, your subject, your circumstances can change. It does not matter how long you've been in the situation, your circumstances is subject to change. You say, well, I've been like this for 10 years. It does not matter. When the moment you activate faith, it will move you from where you are. Now, if you, on that, in that same vein, if we go to Luke 5, and 26, go back to the story. And look what these people said after Jesus moved. Because you got some church folks saying the same thing. Luke 5 and 26 says, 5 and 26, then go back to the King James Version. 5 and 26, and they were all amazed. And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. They had the nerve to say that they had seen strange things today. And you know, it's, I found it shouldn't have been strange. It should be something that's happening all the time. It shouldn't have been unbelievable. Whenever you had a faith of uh, being, the, the word being taught, Faith comes and things ought to be happening in the church, uh, in the body of Christ all the time. But if faith is not being taught 
and your denomination is being taught and everything else is being taught by the word of God, then you'll never see a movement of God. And they say, we have seen strange teachings that can you believe in the church? God wants healing to take place in the church, in the church, and it shouldn't be a strange thing. It shouldn't be something unbelievable. John, because you know what? We're supposed to be doing the works. I, I know a lot of them got, got caught up uh, cooking and selling and bingo gaming and whatever, doing what barbecue, just whatever, and clothing, rummage sales, garage. Do that after you do the work. You know, and so, but don't put that in place and do the work. God is not God have called us to do the work of Jesus. John 14 and 12 through 14 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So Jesus said the same works that he was doing that the body of Christ should be doing. And my prayer is that the body of Christ rise up and begin to do the works of Jesus. So Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. God told us we will cast out demons in the name of Jesus. We will lay our hands on the sick. So my prayer is that the body of Christ rise up and do the works of Jesus so people can Go around saying it's strange. That was we seen strange things to happen, but that changed that confession from strange things to things that happen all the time. This happened all the time in our church. This happened all the time in the Lord Jesus Christ Church. Amen. Thirteen say, and whatsoever we shall ask. This word ask is demand, not from God, but from the devil. What shall we demand in my name that what I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son? And he said, if she shall ask of the man anything in my name, I will do it. So once we realize that we got the power of God in us, we need to go around and demand the devil. Don't ask him, demand him to leave and tell him you get out, begin to lay hands on the sick, then we're going to begin to see the eyes open, the blinded eyes open, the deaf uh, hearing, the lame walker will begin to do the works of Jesus because he said, the works I do shall you do also and greater works because I go to the Father. But we're going to have to take God in his word and begin to do the works of Jesus. Let's go to Luke 7 and 1 to 2. Talk about the works of Jesus. Activate or uh, active faith. I don't know about you, but I want to active faith. I don't want to say I have faith and never do anything. What well, is it? This doesn't do any good to have faith and never act on it and never experience the blessing of God, never benefit from the word of God. I don't want to be that kind of person. I was like that for too many years. Had faith, said I'm a believer, and didn't do nothing but sit on the sideline. But God is looking for people to with an active faith. Now, like I say, a faith to take, not a faith. Faith and wait to go about and doing the works of Jesus. And once we're doing the works, God said, I'm waiting on you to do the work, so I'm going to confirm it, but you're going to have to do something. But instead of y'all waiting on me to do something, no, I told you to do the works. You do the works, and then I'm going to confirm the word in you. And so let's go to Luke uh, 7. 7. Now, the story beginning at the first verse. It says, now when Jesus, now when he had ended all his sayings, ended all these other people, he entered into Capernaum. Talking about Jesus, when he had ended all his sayings. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. What's that, what does that mean when you hear something like that? They say, I'm sick. I'm ready to die. That means they, they had lost hope. They had lost all options. And they, they didn't see no cure. To me, the word has departed from your eyes. If you still are young and you, you know, and God promised you long life and you say you're ready to die. If you say you're ready to die, a lot of people say, well, I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of going through this pain. I don't see no way out. But see, this man was ready to die. And what, what changed that? Because the man didn't die. Let's see what changed that. And he says, uh, and when he had heard of Jesus, see, a lot of people, when you hear the word, when he heard of Jesus, Jesus is synonymous with the word of God. When he heard the word, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. 
And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this, for he loved our nation and he had built us a synagogue. So they told me about the, oh, he worthy because he built us a synagogue. No, the man knew that he didn't have a covenant with Jesus. Amen. Only the children of Abraham Abraham had a covenant with God, and he didn't have a covenant. So he said, well, I built, he loved our nation, and he built the synagogue. Y'all don't care nothing about that. Do you have a covenant with God? Do you have faith? You're going to see what God's going to do. He's going to honor faith, not him building the synagogue. He's going to honor this man's faith. And then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, Unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should promise that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, because he knew he didn't have a covenant. But say, and he said, but say in a word, and I was to speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The man knew the power of of the word of God. So he said this, speak the word of God. And then he said, for I also am a man set on authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto him one go, and he goeth into another comment, and he cometh to my servant, do this, and he doeth this. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled. He said, Jesus marveled. Can we get Jesus to marvel? I would love to get Jesus to marvel at me. It said Jesus marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that follow him. He said, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in you. He said, I ain't even found this faith with you among y'all. And y'all got the covenant, and y'all got a right to be here. And I ain't seen this faith around y'all. But this man, because he got faith in the word of God, I tell you, God will jump over a million folks to get to a person that will operate in faith, that will take him at his word and act on the word of God. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found a servant. And when Jesus heard these see, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I said to you, I have not found so great faith. The Bible called it great faith when you can take God at his word. I don't have no evidence. I don't see nothing. I don't see no change. Only thing I'm standing on is your word, Father. I'm going to speak your word and because your word is my only evidence that my needs are met. Your word is the only evidence that I'm healed in my body. Your word is the only evidence that I have. And he said, and they that were sick returned into the house, found the servant a hole that had been sick. So Jesus responded to the man's faith. He, he had great faith. So now we know that great faith will move the hand of God. And so that's what God wants us to have active faith. So he said, say in the word. Just say the word, just speak the word only. That's all I need, Jesus. And you know, I like that because even in Isaiah 55 and 11, God tells us, so shall my word be. I can say, so shall your word be. That goeth forth out of your mouth. It shall not return unto you, Lord, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper anything where you send it. So, and so you can speak the word of God and Things will happen in your life. He said the word that you have, it won't return unto you, Lord. So whatever you need in God for in your life, well, that, uh, speak the word of God on it. He said it's not going to return, Lord. You say, well, how do I send the word of God? How do I speak the word? It's by speaking it. How do you send the word of God? S speak it. Let the word come forth out of your mouth instead of the circumstances. So you so you so prone and speaking what you see and speaking how you feel and speaking what you hear. No, begin to speak the word of God and let the word of God trump everything around you. And so Psalms 107 20 said, He said his word. Jesus said, I don't know, I already sent my word and healed them and delivered you from your destruction. So Jesus said, 
I have already sent my word. I have, I have already healed you from your destruction. That's anything that could destroy you. So what you will have to do is activate your faith and speak and say the same thing God is saying and stand on God's word. I like what Isaiah 44 and 26 says. It said that confirms the word of the servant. God is only going to confirm his word. He's going to watch over his word to bring it to pass. Like I say many times, not your belly aching, not your boohooing, not your crying, talking about how bad things are and how you can't make it, how you don't know how you're going to make it and what you're going to do. He, You can get his attention, but I don't want to just get God attention. I need God to act. And he said, if you want me to act, then you're going to have to get the, get the word. You're going to have to give me my word back. I'm going to confirm my word and my word only. And so we are his servants. The word is for you and me to speak it. So God give us the word, put it in our mouth to speak it. And he said, won't return it to you, boy, but you're going to have to believe it. Now, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Let's go to Psalms 35 and 27. Psalm 35 and 27 says, let them say continually. They say, this is something we need to continue to say, not when we get in trouble, but they say all the time. Continue, let the Lord be magnified. Let the word be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of the servants. Not the lack, not, not, not the brokenness, but he said the prosperity. So you want to please God? Activate. God said he get pleasure when we activate his word. And then that's us. We're his servants. But guess what? We'll know that was in the Old Testament. God now calls us his friend. So if you go to John 15 and 15, it said, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So God says, since we are his friends, it's, he said, I have made, we're his children. And then, then he said, oh, you're my friend. You know, it's some things, it's good to have a good friend. I don't know how many have a good friend that you can reveal and talk to your friend. There's certain things that you can talk to your friend about that you don't care you talk to your own relatives about, your own sisters and brothers about. The Bible says there is a friend that's taking closer than a brother. And so there is a friend. And so Jesus calls us a friend. He said, everything that the Father has revealed to me, I have revealed it unto you. That's how God sees us as friends. Amen. So he, God wants us to be like him. Let's go to Galatians 4 and 7. One more uh, after that. One Galatians 4 and 7. Galatians 4 and 7. I like what he says. Uh, uh, it says uh, now we're no longer living like slaves. I like that. I refuse to live like a slave. He said, I'm in the law. But we enjoy being God's very own sons and daughters. So I would say, are you enjoying being God's very own sons and daughters? And because we're his, we can access. This is awesome. We can access everything our father has. That means we got access to our to interest into everything God has. For we are heirs of God through Jesus, the Messiah. So Jesus said, all things that are yours. All Jesus said, all things that are mine are yours. We're joint heirs together with, uh, with Jesus. So he says, everything, we got everything. It's just, so we don't have to be sick, broke, depressed, talking about how bad things are. Activate the faith of God in you. He said he's able to do all, everything according to the amount of word that you got in you. He said he's able to do exceeding above all that we ask or think according to the power. That's the amount of word that you got in you. So activate that word of God. Get your faith going. Amen. And the last scripture of the day, John 15 and 7 says, if ye abide in me, if you remain in me, and my words now, so a lot of people say, well, I'm in Jesus, but let's move on. Let's say it's something else too that go along with that. If you abide in me and my words, see, the word have to abide in you, not a one-night stand. You got to continually uh, 
be in the word of God. Because the Bible says you gave this word be in you. And you meditating in this word day and night. It say, if you abide, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So if you allow my words to abide in you and live up in live in you, take up residence in you, then he said, you can ask what you will. So my question is, what do you want? What do you want in your life? What do you want God to do? But it's up to you. What do you want in your life? Then I would say every the kingdom of God is in you. Begin to speak it forth out of you. Begin to activate your faith. Because he said all things of yours. And he has given you everything that pertain unto life and godliness. So you having the word of God. The word of God is in us. Gives us an advantage. Amen. So thank God for his word on today. And thank God for an active faith. Not a passive faith, but a faith that takes, not a faith that waits. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.